Hi everyone, it's Patty Alaka back with some tools for living. I hope that you're feeling well today, but even if you're not, I'm really glad that you've chosen to spend this time with me. I'm really excited about what the Lord has put on my heart to speak about today. Today we're going to talk about the threefold path. The Lord has a lot to say about that, but before we get started, let's go to prayer as the Lord reminds us to pray without ceasing. Heavenly Father, wonderful Lord Jesus, glorious Holy Spirit, we come to your throne on our knees in humility today, Lord. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You're all that exists. Everything that we do and everything that we don't do is for you and for your glory. We give praise and honor and glory to your holy name for all the ways that you're working in our lives, Lord. And Lord, I thank you for bringing me and whoever is watching this video into this space right here, right now, Lord. And we ask that you heal us physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and relationally. Teach us what it is that you would like us to know. Not my words, but your words, Lord. Not my will, but your will, Lord. We ask all of this in your powerful and mighty name, Lord Jesus. Amen. So thank you again for being here today. I'm really excited about this topic. So I have a question for you. The threefold path. What do you think that means? You know, that's nothing new. That comes from ancient times. The threefold path is about the teacher, the teachings, and the school. Let's take a step back. Let's breathe pause, invite the Lord into our hearts, and let's be thinking about what the Lord wants us to do in this world. I have a question for you. Are you hooked up with a teacher, a really good teacher? How about teachings? Are you learning? You know, we are never too old to learn. Uh, whether we're two or 102, we still have room to grow. And how about a school? Are you attending school? Even if you've already graduated college, or high school or wherever it is that you've gone? Well, the school of life is one that requires a teacher, teachings, and a school. But also we want to be very discerning about who it is that we choose to be our teacher and what teachings we are going to listen to and apply to our life and what kind of school we're going to go to. So what I love to think about when we go over this topic is to remember that the Lord reminds us in John 16, 33, 16, 33, in John 16, 33, he says, this is Jesus speaking. I have told you these things that you may have peace in me. In this world, you will experience tribulation, trials, um, and be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. So our wonderful Lord Jesus is telling us that thousands of years later, that he absolutely experienced trials, but to be of good cheer, because when we go through our own trials and tribulation, when we go through our own hardships, we can lean on him. So we are encouraged to first, when we think about the teacher, who is your teacher? Who is my teacher? We are encouraged to have the Trinity, the Father that made us, the Son that saved us, and the Holy Spirit that lives within us is with us at all times, always. And all we need to do is to call him right into our heart. So he is truly our eternal teacher. And what are the teachings? Well, the teachings are none other than the Bible often referred to as the basic instructions before leaving earth. When we can get our nose in a really good Bible, really good study Bible, and apply these verses to our life and our life circumstances, it can absolutely make our lives so much easier. And what is the school? Well, the school is the body of Christ, the church, if you are not in a church right now, I truly encourage you to seek out a church that is full of the Holy Spirit. Spend some time thinking about in your neighborhood, where are churches and see if you can go from time to time and look at how you're feeling in that church. When you are in a church that is filled with the Holy Spirit, you absolutely will feel so much better and you will feel so much more peaceful. 
and we'll go over all three layers. So what we're referring to today is the threefold path is the Trinity, the Father that made us, the Son that saved us, and the Holy Spirit that lives within us. That's the first part of the threefold path. The second part of the threefold path is the Bible, really learning about how it is that we can apply these verses to our lives and who it, it reminds us of who the teacher is. And the third part is the body of Christ, the church. Go into a really good church. Get into the habit of going into church regularly. And you'll find that there are probably going to be groups of people and different groups that you can sign up for so that you can learn from everyone in the church and you can pour into them as they pour into you. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And so I really want to encourage you, you know, to be thinking about how is it that you can deepen your faith walk. I have a question for you. Let's take a moment, take a step back and breathe. How is your faith walk? Does it feel somewhat one dimensional? Does it feel like, yeah, it's there. I'll use it if I need it. Well, you can deepen your relationship with our wonderful teacher, our wonderful Lord, the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, by applying all three of these aspects relying more fully on the Lord, reading his sacred word, and getting into a church and connecting with the body of Christ, also known as the church believers, the church people, and the believers of our wonderful Lord. And so it's really important to be thinking about how it is that you can deepen that walk. You know, there's a difference between reading the Bible and learning about who lived thousands of years ago and learning about a person. You know, if you're not familiar with someone, you might do a Google search and learn about that person, but that doesn't mean that you have a relationship with that person. When we can apply these three aspects, the teacher, the teachings, and the school, we can deepen that relationship with our wonderful Lord, and we truly can have a relationship with him. How are you doing in your life and your life circumstances? Are you needing a little help? You know, what's so beautiful is to be thinking about our wonderful Lord is with us every moment of every hour of every day, no matter where we go, no matter what we do. All we need to do is to call him right into our heart. He's so ready, willing, and able to help us, to be our best friend, to teach us about how we can rise above our circumstances. Would you like that? You know, very often people become attached to people, to places, and to things. And when those people, places, and things are taken away, it can really be very heart-wrenching. And so what I'm encouraging you to do today is to be thinking about how it is that you truly can deepen your relationship with our wonderful Lord. Get into the habit of talking to him on a regular basis and listening to what he is, has to tell you about how it is to live your life. And he can help you through all of your circumstances. I had an experience uh, last week where I needed oral surgery. And hey, I have to say, I was somewhat anxious about that and hearing the drilling and uh, feeling the cutting. And, you know, I was awake through the whole process. But I also knew that the Lord was with me. And I actually took out my cross and I just held on to it. I put my earbuds on and I listened to worship music. And I have to tell you, that experience of oral surgery was completely transformed right on the spot. And I could just feel the presence of the Lord. He was with me. He was helping me through that experience. He was guiding the footsteps of all that were working on me. And it can be applied just like that in your life too. So what are you going through right now? What are you needing help with? I seriously um, encourage you to in, uh, listen to these words. Invite the Lord into your heart. This week in your quiet time, in your self-reflection time, in your journal time, begin to be thinking about, do you have any room to grow? Do you need to step it up a little bit? Do you need to deepen your relationship with our wonderful Lord? Do you need to learn a little bit more about what the Lord has to say and how to live your life? And can you connect a little bit more with fellow believers where they can absolutely help you and support you through all of your circumstances? So we're going to go a little bit deeper and to be thinking about how it is 
that we can truly rely on the Lord fully and completely. So if you haven't done this already, I want to encourage you to develop a relationship with the Lord. And if you had done this before, you can do this right along with us right now. It's as simple as A, B, C. First, we admit that we've made mistakes. We admit that we have sinned. We've missed the mark. We've derailed. I'm a sinner. You're a sinner. We're all fallible. We're all human beings. We're going to make mistakes. That's a fact. So we can take a moment to admit that right here, right now. The second step is to believe that our wonderful Lord Jesus loves us so much that he died on a cross. He was nailed to the cross for our sins because he loves us that much. So take a moment to be thinking about that and believe that he truly died for our sins and just place all those sins, all those mistakes that you made, put them right at the foot of the cross. Whether you did that today or yesterday or a week ago or a year ago or five years ago, it doesn't matter. Put it all right at the foot of the cross and instead exchange it for his grace, his mercy, and his peace. So believe that he loves you so much that he wants to save you in all of your circumstances. And then C, commit your life to Christ. Commit your life to Christ. See if you can go deeper into a relationship with him. See if you can pick up a really good study Bible. I'll put some suggestions in um, the description section of Bibles that I have read through that have been super helpful for me. And also commit your life to Christ. How can you deepen your faith walk? It will help you to feel so much better and it will help you in all of your circumstances in life. So let's go a little bit deeper. I want you to get comfortable, sit back, relax. If you're driving, keep your eyes on the road, but sit back and relax and begin to be asking yourself these questions. Number one, examine your faith walk. That just simply means, how are you doing? You know, we talk about physical, emotional, mental, spiritual. We're addressing the spiritual layer right now. What is it that you can do to step it up a little bit? How is it your, that your faith walk is going? We all have room to grow. Number two, begin to be looking at where is it? Ask the Lord to help you to see. Do you need to deepen your relationship with our wonderful Lord as the teacher? <clears throat> Do you need to spend more time reading the Bible or listening to the Bible? That's the teachings. And number three, do you need to go back into a church? I know during COVID, many people left the church. It's time to go back into the church. Or maybe you're not happy with the church that you're in. Keep listening to churches that people go to. Do a Google search. Uh, reach out to me. I would be more than happy to help you. But look at how it is that you can step into a church. How is it that you could connect more fully with the body of Christ, the fellow believers, and begin to be looking at, do you need to grow? Do you need to expand? Ask the Lord. Pray and ask him into your heart. Ask him to help you so that you can turn your relationship with him, the teacher, from one dimensional that you're just reading about. Yeah, I know he exists. Yeah, I know he's there into a deep, full relationship with our wonderful Lord, knowing that he truly can be there with you through all of your circumstances, through all of your hardships, as you think about your own attachments to people, places, and things, you could begin to deeply attach to our wonderful Lord, and it truly will help you in all your circumstances, and it will help you to feel so much better. So let's go a little bit deeper into scripture and let's hear what the Lord has to say about the teacher, the teachings, and the school. Again, the teacher is the Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. The teachings is the Bible and the school is the church and the body of Christ. So we'll go to Psalm 68, 19, where it says, Blessed be the Lord 
who daily bears us up. God is our salvation. Selah. Amen. And Selah just means pause. Let's take a pause and really listen to these words. Blessed is the Lord who daily, every single day, he's bearing us up. And God is our salvation. Our wonderful Abba Father loves us that much that he sent his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. And so our wonderful Abba Father sent us a, a savior. He sent us his only begotten son to save us from ourselves, to save us from our sins, to save us from all our circumstances. And we get to have him, the Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. In Hebrews 13, 8, it says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. We don't have to attach to just people, places, and things that are going to be taken away from us, that people are going to die. Chapters are going to change. We are going to move. That's a fact. Things are going to shift. And when we're so deeply attached to people, places, and things, it hurts so much when they're taken away. But when we can attach to our amazing, wonderful Lord, knowing that he's with us every moment of every hour of every day, no matter where we go, no matter what we do, it will be so much easier to deal with when chapters close in our life, when seasons change in our life. So we're going to go first to the Trinity. We'll read these verses about the Trinity. So in 2 Corinthians 3, 17, it says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Amen. I have a question for you. Have you experienced freedom and peace in your life? When you feel it so deeply, when you deepen your relationship with our wonderful Lord, you'll begin to feel peace in all your circumstances on a regular basis. And then you will know when you're not feeling peace. And when you're not feeling peace, that just means that the Lord is not in that situation and you can invite him into that situation. Begin to become really discerning about when you're feeling the Lord's peace and when you are not. And that can be your barometer to continue to follow our wonderful Lord. In John 14, 26, it says, Jesus said, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you about all things and bring to you the remembrance of all that I have said to do. Amen. Such a beautiful reminder that the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit work together. They are our teacher. Three persons in one. We're so blessed to have the all three aspects of a father who loves us so much. The wonderful Lord Jesus who saves us from ourselves and from our sins. And the Holy Spirit that truly lives within us. They work in tandem together. Three persons in one God helps us in all of our circumstances. And in Romans 8.11 it says, And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. Amen. Such a beautiful reminder that our wonderful Lord Jesus was nailed to a cross for our sins. But that's not the end of the story. He rose from the cross. He rose from that. His body rose and the Holy Spirit uh, helped him to rise. And what these verses are saying is just like the Holy Spirit rose his body, the Holy Spirit lives with us, in us and can help us to rise to higher vibrations, to higher circumstances. And that Holy Spirit is living in us right here, right now. And so now we'll go to the Word of God. Uh, we'll uh, concentrate on these verses to dive deep into the Word of God the Bible, the basic instructions before leaving earth. So in Psalm 119, 105, it says, Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. 
Amen. And his word is the beautiful Bible. As you get into the habit of reading or listening to the Bible, you will be amazed at how much these verses that were inspired by the Holy Spirit thousands of years ago still apply to us today. And it feels so good to apply these beautiful verses to our life. In Luke eleven twenty eight, it says, Blessed are they who hear the word of God and obey it. Amen. So we are encouraged to not just read the word of God and not just hear the word of God, but also obey the word of God. Not just to be hearers of the word, but to be doers of the world, to take these verses and apply them to our circumstances. It will help us to feel so much better. And in Isaiah 48, it says, The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of God endures forever. Amen. I love that reminder so much, speaking about the fact that the Bible exists all the time thousands of years ago these words were written inspired by the holy spirit and now today they still apply to our lives and so when we think about again the people places and things that we're attached to guess what the bible is the same yesterday today and forever that does not wither that does not change the word of god stands forever amen and in matthew uh, 4 4 it says jesus said it is written man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Amen. Such a beautiful reminder that we don't just need food. You know, food is certainly enjoyable and we certainly do need healthy food choices to sustain our physical body, but we also need to rely on the word of God to eat the word of God, so to speak, and apply those beautiful verses into our life and into our life circumstances. It will help us to feel so much better. And now we're going to go over the verses to apply to the body of Christ. The body of Christ, again, known as the church people, fellow believers, so that they can pour into you and you can pour into them. Getting into a really healthy church, listening to the pastor, the priest, the minister, and listening to the word of God can absolutely help us to deepen our connection with the body of Christ. In John 13, 35, it says, By this all will be known that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Amen. So it's just such a beautiful reminder. Again, by this all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. So he wants us to love one another. He wants us to love the body of Christ. He wants us to pour into them as they pour into us and connect more fully and deeply with him. And you know, he reminds us that when there are two or more that gather in his name, there he is. So we truly know that he's with us right now when there's two or more that gather. And that will help us to deepen our relationship with our wonderful Lord. In Ephesians 2, 19, 22, it says, you are no longer strangers or foreigners, but you are fellow citizens of the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone in whom the whole building joined together grows into a holy temple of the Lord, in whom you also are built up together into a dwelling place of God in the spirit. Amen. Such a beautiful reminder that we all work together. Our wonderful Lord invites us to be a part of that beautiful building, a part of that beautiful temple, to connect with one another, where he truly is the cornerstone. He is helping us. He is our teacher. He is shedding his love, light, grace, mercy, and peace on all of our circumstances. And that truly can help us to feel so much better and deepen our relationship with our wonderful Lord. In 1 Peter 2, 9, 10, it says, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's possession, so that you may proclaim the virtues of the one who called you out 
of darkness and into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but now are a people of God, the ones who were not shown mercy, but now are shown mercy. Amen. When we can follow our wonderful Lord, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, when we can read his beautiful teachings in the Bible, and when we can connect with the body of Christ, fellow believers, and go into church and listen to the beautiful messages and sermons and homilies and connect with the body of Christ in church groups, all of that will rise us up, will sanctify us, will purify us. He calls us, he invites us to be with him. And that truly can help us to develop a deep relationship with him where he's with us every moment of every hour of every day, no matter where we go, no matter what we do. So this week in your quiet time, in your self-reflection time, in your journal time, I encourage you to be thinking about these verses, to be thinking about these uh, points. Where is it that you have room to grow? Do you need to deepen your relationship with our wonderful Lord? Do you need to spend more time in his beautiful word and read the Bible? Do you need to connect more with fellow believers? There's always room to grow. There's no shame in that. We all have room to grow. So step it up. I encourage you to see how it is that you can deepen that connection and then really help yourself feel the presence of the Lord he is calling you deeper and deeper and deeper. Will you take that invitation? I sure hope that you do. It will help you to feel so much better. I hope that this message was helpful for you today. I am praying for you every single day, and I ask that you please pray for me too. I would love to hear from you if you have any comments or questions, or if you would like to schedule a session to go deeper. I am a clinical pastoral counselor, a nurse, a life coach, and a therapist. I would love to hear from you, and I would love to work with you. You can reach out to me on my website, toolsforliving.net. That's tools, the number four, living.net. I hope you have a wonderful day. God bless you. Take care. Bye-bye.